hands together for the man of the hour, Joe Pelletieri! Thank you for coming. Oh my God, thank you for coming. Look at this room. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, my uncle Gary was a member of parliament. He, was, uh, he served like 12 years or something like that uh, as a member of parliament. And he was not one of those politicians who let the existence of a word get in the way of him using it. He, uh, I'll tell you what I mean. I, I was in university when Uncle Gary was on question period. And uh, my, my cousin said, hey, there's a guy named Pelletieri on TV. And he was two rows behind John Cretchen. And honest to God, this is what he said. He gets up. Uh, to the honorable member who sits across the floor from me, I say to you with the utmost of respensatiousness. <laughs> so when I picked up the wine, this is what he said. He said, Joseph, Joseph, you're doing comedy shows. You know, sometimes when you use comedetrics with people, <laughs> And my Aunt Lena is very proud of her grandchildren. She's, uh, my Aunt Lena is very proud of, like they've got successful grandchildren, but she throws it in your face every time you're there. So she sees me lowering the wine and she goes, what do you do, Joseph, tell a joke? <laughs> you tell a joke and that's what you do tomorrow night? <laughs> it's so nice, you tell a joke, it's so nice. You know, Alex, he get drafted by the Vancouver Canal. <laughs> Well, you tell the joke, it's nice. <laughs> right? So she's a really good lawyer, John. Really good. You tell the joke, that's okay. Uh, I want to thank my sisters and their friends uh, for setting all of the work that goes into this. If you know my sister Eileen, my sister Caroline, and all their friends, too many to name. They, uh, they're just the greatest. They really do an amazing job. Eileen does all this work, and, and, and it was, uh, these, I get really nervous before these shows, especially two days before, because you just never know if people are going to come. And look, there you are. You came. <laughs> and, uh, and so it turns out that my sister ends up with the stomach flu on Thursday. She ended up sick in her bed and sick as a dog. And there's two theories out there as to how she got sick. There's my theory and there's my mom's theory. I'll tell you what I thought. I was there on Tuesday when her little guy Stevie, she's got four kids, she's got this adorable little guy Stevie, and he's got the cutest little voice, this blonde little head, and he came running into her and he's like, Mom, Mommy, Mom, Mom, Mommy, I love you. And she said, I love you too, Stevie. He goes, I love you. Can I have a hug, Mom, Mommy? And she said, oh, of course you can have a hug, Stevie. And she hugs me. Can I, can I kiss you on, the, on your face, Mommy? And she said, of course you can kiss me on your face. And she kissed him on the face. I love you too, Stevie. And he said, oh, I forgot to tell you something, Mommy. I just threw up on my bed. Can, can, can you help me clean it? So that's how I thought she got sick. My mother, who if you don't know my mom, she's very Catholic and very Scottish. And she's old school, she's really like... So my sister planned a movie night for Ash Wednesday, which was just this past <laughs> Ash Wednesday. She had 20 girls. <laughs> How undersexed is that table? <laughs> Sheriff, I'm looking at you, I'm not looking at you. So, my sister takes, she doesn't do, she doesn't just say like, let's a couple of us go to the movie, she says, Girls, let's pre-buy tickets, let's get Cosmopolitans, we're gonna go see Fifty Shades of Grey, right? They go, so Fifty Shades of Grey on Ash Wednesday, I get the phone call from my mom, who's like, well, did you hear what your sister's planned tonight? <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> on Ash Wednesday, your grandparents would be rolling in their graves. <laughs> And half the girls still had ashes on their head when they went to go to the movie. 